Kings of the Wild, except it's spelled with a Y because it's like cool and edgy and stuff. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Okay, so Kings of the Wild, this one has been requested a lot recently, and actually going back a while it's been requested a lot, but anyways, the point is, this one I really liked. You know, it's not a traditional epic fantasy the way I was thinking it might have been, and it's not really a traditional heroic fantasy either. It is, for the most part, a pretty light-hearted story about some dudes who have already gone on a lot of adventures, and this is sort of their last hurrah. And while there is some stuff, especially in the latter part of the book, that is all about, like, you know, saving the world, saving this city, and all that, it is, for the most part, pretty lighthearted and pretty funny and, well, just fun. So the story follows this guy named Clay, or it mostly follows Clay, at least, and he is an old, retired mercenary. He used to be part of this mercenary band called Saga, and it was him and four other dudes, and what mercenaries do in this world is they usually, like, go off into this big wilderness called the Heartwild, which is full of monsters, you know, goblins and ogres and cyclops, trolls, like, all sorts of stuff that you can imagine. And they go in and clear out troublesome spots in there. And, you know, Saga was this big, famous, very successful mercenary band, and about 20 years before the story starts, they broke up, and now Clay is just a guard in a small town, you know, he's married, has a daughter, uh, keeps in somewhat contact with some of his old bandmates, but not that many. And when the story starts, this one named Gabriel, who is one that he actually does still keep contact with, comes up to him and he basically says, Hey, my daughter's in a lot of trouble. Uh, she could die soon if I don't go save her. I need your guys' help. And eventually Clay agrees to it. He's kind of reluctant at first, but in the end he's like, Well, I can't, uh leave you and your daughter hanging, so I'll go. And then the story unfolds from there. They get the rest of the band back together, and then they go have to cross the Heartwild and go to the city that's under siege in order to rescue his daughter. And yeah, it's, it's a pretty simple story overall. Now the best part of the story is just how fun and lighthearted it is. Like, there are a lot of little jokes, not only in the narration, but also in the characters talking to one another. And you really do get the feeling that, for these guys, a lot of what they do is banal. Like, to us, seeing a bunch of mercenaries cut through, like, a horde of goblins or something, that should be exciting or cool. But to them, it's just like, yeah, we've done this sort of thing a million times, and even though they're kind of old and, you know, in a lot of cases, fat, out of shape, like, they're in their late 40s, early 50s at this point, so, you know, they, they're, uh, <laughs> they're, get, they're getting up there in age. But, you know, even though they're kind of out of shape and they're not fighting as well as they could have 20 years earlier, they're still not that intimidated by a lot of this. I guess that's the best way of putting it. And that is pretty funny. And then they also make jokes about stuff like how Clay had sex with mermaids and stuff. Like, you know, just little things like that spread throughout are genuinely really funny and really great. And then, um, as Clay and Gabriel start gathering up more members of the band, they, uh, each of them has their own issues that they're dealing with that they need to help out with real quick before they can go off on their adventure. And then the adventure itself is, uh, I'd say it's about half the book, because, like, the first half is just getting everyone together, and the second half is going off and doing it. What I will say is that the second half of the book is a little bit weaker, because while the first half does introduce a villain, actually more than one villain, really, and it does sort of hint at, okay, yeah, there's bigger forces at play, there's going to be more stuff going on, it's not a simple battle that we're going into. Uh, it also feels like that's kind of a sideshow, and the main story is still just th these couple of guys trying to save one person. <laughs> and then the second half, it brings all that uh, political war stuff into the forefront, and... While it's not complicated or anything, it's still pretty simple. It, the, the story never really evolves beyond go here, kill the bad guys, save the good guys. It is still kind of, uh, well, how, how should I put this? It's, um, it, it feels more traditional, I guess, is the way I should put it. Like, 
the second half feels more like a regular epic fantasy, and while it's done well, don't get me wrong, it's not bad by any means, I was never bored or anything, I do wish that it had stayed with the totally lighthearted, fun tone, because the first half, you're not really supposed to take it all that seriously. And even in the second half, there's still jokes and stuff. Like, they repeatedly refer to getting all the mercenaries together as getting the band back together, and then there's a chapter near the end of the book that's literally called The Battle of the Bands. Like, the author knew what he was doing, you know? It, it's a pretty silly book for the most part, and I just wish it had stayed that way. But again, the dark bits aren't bad. You know, there's a... The backstory of the main villain, Last Leaf, is genuinely pretty great. I haven't seen anything like that before, but it's also really twisted, and had that been in a book that was just more dark overall, then I think it would have been fantastic. As it is here, it's still good, but it feels just a little out of place. As for other stuff I should complain about, um, I think there are a few too many characters in this. Like, <clears throat> I mean, it's a, basically a heroic fantasy at the end of the day, which means you should just focus on this small cast, and all the main characters are great, by the way. Like, all the mercenaries, Clay and Gabriel are kind of the straight men, like, they're pretty normal, and so at the beginning of the book you might be thinking, okay, the rest of the characters aren't going to stand out that much, but no, they do. They're, they're all kind of weird and unusual in their own ways, which is, which is great. But, um, yeah, beyond the mercenary band, there are a lot of other characters, some of whom stand out, and a lot of whom don't. And so after a while, when it starts introducing new people, they kind of just blend together as, oh, this is one of Saga's old friends, and this is also one of Saga's old friends, and this is also one of Saga's old friends, and then this is somebody who's after them for this reason, and this is somebody who hates them for this reason. And so there are just a few too many, uh, particularly with the villains, because I think if they were going to have... Like, they basically have three main villains, or hell, you could say four main villains in this book, and I think two or three of them could have just been combined together. But, you know, it's not a big deal. I, I'm really just looking for things to complain about at this point. And I will say that while the climax is really good, you know, it's this big battle, it's a whole lot of fun, there's crazy stuff happening, they're killing monsters, killing people, all sorts of neat, crazy stuff, um, and it does end in a way where it's like, okay, I know there are sequels to this, but you don't have to read them. Like, this wraps up the story very well, and I'm actually not sure what they do with the sequels. It might be like a generational sequel where it's just their kids going off doing stuff. I, I don't know, but anyways, uh, it ends that way, which is great, but then there's an epilogue, and the epilogue is honestly kind of depressing. Like, I, I feel this book either should have just left the epilogue out and ended on a little bit of a higher note, or it should have rewritten the epilogue so it was a little less, well, sad, honestly. <laughs> like, I get that a big part of this book is that their heyday is over, and they have to step aside, let the youngins come in and do their thing, while Saga just enjoys retirement and enjoys the rest of their lives, but at the same time, it, it just, I don't know, it, it uh, left me leaving the book on a downer note rather than a happy one. But despite all the complaining I was just doing, this really is a fantastic book. Like, absolutely phenomenal. Like, one of the best ones I've read in a while, or I guess technically not read because I got this as an audiobook, but whatever. It is fantastic. It is funny. It has a bunch of action-packed stuff, it has a bunch of characters that are all really likable, it has one really good villain, and uh, even though it gets a little too deep into the epic fantasy, saving the world type stuff, uh, that was done fairly well, and for the most part the focus was kept small. It, it was kept on just this one group of characters trying to save one person, and in the end, yeah, I would recommend this to fans of pretty much all types of fantasy, really. Like, if you enjoy heroic fantasy, go ahead and check it out. If you enjoy uh, light-hearted stories, check it out. If you enjoy epic fantasy, check it out. Like, if you enjoy dark fantasy, I don't know how much this would uh, intrigue you, uh, but there are some parts that you would probably like. And, yeah, overall, just really great book. You should check it out. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all my patrons whose names are here, but especially thanks to Apo Sabalainen, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinton, Christopher Hawkins, Joseph Pendergraft, and Tobacco Crow. You guys are, uh, 
You guys are great. If you want to get your name on here, then consider donating to my page. You also get stuff like early access to my videos and voting on future video topics, so you know, if that if that interests you, then go ahead and check it out. And if you can't do that, then like the video, comment on the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will... Yeah, bye.